Good. Kim, you want to hit record? Thank you. First up, I just want to thank our newcomers that we had from this last week. Andrew. Andrew here? No, Andrew's not here. Andrew, we welcome you. And Daniel, uh, very happy to have you. Daniel is a commercial agent as well. A big round of applause and welcome. You guys will have to reach people from Rocket Tech and make sure you give them a big, warm welcome. All right, so this is a great time of the year for this. Let's start out with some bucket fills. Who has a bucket that they would like to fill? A shout out, kudos. I'll get started. I have a slide even. Um, congratulations to <laughs> Yes, so um, those of you guys that don't know, very hot off the presses, uh, Penny has just been nominated uh, for the a grievance committee, right, for PWR. So do not get in trouble because Penny McCann might be on the other side of that decision. <laughs> Penny, why don't you stand up and tell us a little bit more, like what is grievance? Why is it important? And what, you know, why did you step up to leadership in this way? Oh, gosh. Um, I think, uh, I don't, 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 don't quote me on this, but I think real estate, uh, agents have a reputation of being new content. And I think we, we have to step up, guys. How many of you have passed your exam if you don't read your articles? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, and I think we can a bit more accountable. I've been on the receiving end of um, agents that have done unethical things to me, and I want to stand for it. So that's why I decided to. I nominated myself for you to send it to me. And then they said, you can make questions. And I looked at it and I went, I've got some reading to do. <laughs> so I, you know, I just think it's time that there's so much happening in real estate at the minute. Everything's happening so fast. We have to step ourselves up and hold each other accountable. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Penny, Thank so much you. for serving. <laughs> Um, again, it, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it, you know, I, I just feel so grateful sometimes we have those checks and balances in place to help govern our industry because it's so important that you step up to leadership and help contribute, whether it's within your local organization or even see our NAR conventions happening this week, too. I don't know if anyone's going, but remember. Us getting involved helps get us a seat at the table to help make the decisions that are impacting our industry on a literally daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Um, so make sure that you guys do it. If you're concerned about how to get involved with any of them, either local board, CR, or NAR, come and talk to me. Come and talk to Penny. Uh, come and talk, go and talk to Rob Feldman. I know he's served before. There's a lot of people that can help guide you and show you what that path looks like. Even if you're a new agent, there's ways that you can still get involved and serve. Okay, so again, shout out to Penny. Anyone else? Bucket fills for anyone? No? Okay, I'll go. I'll see. Good. Uh, Emma, yes. I'll say thank you to my team leader, Richard. Um, I think like what I've learned being a Keller Williams is beyond any successful agent. There is always somebody that holds you accountable. There is always a coach, yeah. somebody that can mentor you. So I don't think I would be here if I didn't have him. Um, I probably would have either quit or would not serve as many agents <laughs> um, So thank you, Mr. for being patient and uh, such a good mentor and you guys. Oh, we have just begun to learn the things that you have to give us. And we're excited, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys, let's move on. Let's take a look at our production that we had from this week. Three little closings. <laughs> Three. Um, but anyways, congratulations, you guys. Uh, Joe Rogan, Robert Reynolds, Elaine Ross, and Judy Pierce, and Kelly. Look, Kelly's on fire. She's got some stuff in escrow. She has this amazing energy about her. I don't know if she's here in the room, but shout out to Kelly. And drum roll, please. What does that equal? It's still pretty impressive. Six million nine hundred seventy-four thousand five hundred dollars in production. Not terrible. Not terrible. Right? There were some big numbers up there from those transactions. Okay, let's take a look at our listings that we have currently right now on the market. The Shannon Jones team. 
528 Cedar Avenue, Unit 1E in Long Beach. One bed, one bath, $380,000. Contact the Shannon Jones team. Lane Ross and Judy Pierce have something in Cyprus. 9682 Walker Court, Unit number 35. It's listed for 730K, two bedroom, two and a half bath. Team Tolbert, I don't know Jeff's here, Harbor City. Uh, we do have a listing here, 1116254 Street in Harbor City, 524,999, right? Three bed, one bath. I think it was just over this weekend, too. We had a lot of people go through. Lar Leslie and Leslie. Leslie, do you want to pitch this one? Um, it's actually a five bedroom, two bath. It's showing as a four. Um, they removed one of the walls and just put the size of the space. Uh, $1,500 on a corner lot in Montclair. It's looking at some renovations, but I, I think you know, I think the room is quite too large. Looks like it has a nice big yard, too. Yes, but a big bath. That's great. Congratulations. And Larlet is the mentee. So congrats to you with that, Leslie. Perry has a listing in Signal Hill of $579,900, uh, 2601 East 19th Street. That's a two bed, two bath. In Signal. Okay. Any listing pitches, buyer needs, grievance, headlines? What do you have for us? Um, I have a lease in Newport Beach. It is at 445 Fullerton Avenue. And yes, you did hear me talk about it earlier in the year. We leased it. Husband and wife kind of like separated, whatever. So I got the house back. Um, 6,000 a month. It's vacant. Show and go. And um, bring me a lease. Furnish? Unfurnish. Unfurnish. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah. new board. Okay, contact Katie McCann. Yes. I'm Heidi, and this is my partner, Leslie. We just joined the team. The yesterday. Yes, so we're excited to have We have two teams right now. We have one in the world, one that one that's about 600 square feet. It's perfect for an update. Um, 225 cash. Let us know, mutual four. And then we have a four bedroom, three bath with horse property, about 15,000 square foot backyard with horse stables in Covina. And it's listed for a million one thirty five. Ooh, horses. I love horses. <laughs> Great. Thank you guys. Welcome. Very excited you guys pitch. Anyone else? Listing pitches. Yeah, James, fire me. I'm looking for a rental unit of preferably a single family at home, uh, under three thousand. Really, anywhere it can be from Clark's to Orange County. Have someone who's looking for a place to rent a two uh, bedroom, one bath, preferably if it's larger for you. Great, thank you. Contact James back there. Anyone else? Where they just keep popping up? All right, moving on. Okay, look, it's me. Um, so <laughs> great. Um, so I want to do a really fun activity. How many of you guys have read or had the pleasure of getting to hear uh, Phil and Joan speak on exactly what to say? Has anyone read this book, the Little Black Book? Exactly what to say, right? You did it last year on uh, book club. You did it last year on book club. Again, if you guys have not read this book, it is amazing. So it's even a conversation with someone. Um, just the other day about the conversations that we have in the field and with our clients. Now, how many times have we been working with someone? James, like, how many times have we been working with someone and we hear the same types of questions over and over and over again? We may get questions about the market and maybe questions about specific scenarios, but at the end of the day, we need to know exactly what we're going to say when we encounter these situations here in the field. So who are my seasoned agents in the room? Raise your hand. And by I mean seasoned, I mean doing 10 deals or more in your career. Raise your hand for me. And please be confident. <laughs> Penny, raise your hand. Okay, <laughs> great. So you guys are gonna help us participate in an activity today since you're so seasoned. And Stefan is really ready to do this. Let's <laughs> try <laughs> happy. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to practice exactly what to say. So I'm gonna go around the room with some of our agents. I'm gonna have you guys take a little slip of paper, okay? I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do here to give you a little bit of practice. So you're gonna 
going to read the piece of paper, and this is something that you hear from a client, a potential lead, or someone like that in the field that says a sentence or phrase, and we are going to talk to our producing agents and say, what would you say to this person? What have you said to this person? Where's a good direction? And then anyone else you'd like to share afterwards to add on top of it. So we all feel like we know exactly what to say. Okay? Does everyone follow me? So for example, this first sheet of paper that I just pulled out is the situation of lead gen. Let me know if anyone's ever heard this. Um, I actually want to wait to sell my house until after the holiday. Ooh, I want to wait to sell my house or list my house until after the holiday. Right? So I would say something to them along the effect of, you know, well, there's actually a lot of benefits to getting your house on the market right now. What's changing for you if you wait until after the holiday? Right? Pose another question. Ask them about what's going to change. Well, we do have some statistical data that says houses actually get more during the holidays because there's less competition on the market with other listings. Right? So you can come back with some of those things to say. Hey, did you understand the assignment? Stefan's going to start with us. Stefan, pull one and read for us. Let's hear exactly what Stefan is going to say. Open house. Uh, I love this house, but I don't think I can afford it. Ooh, so a phone comes up to you and says, you know, Stefan, I really love this house, but I don't think I can afford it. What would you say to them? Just in general, what would you say? I would say, well, I'm glad that you like the house. Uh, tell me what is it about this house that um, speaks to you? Yeah. I would go back and emphasize the house. Everyone wants a house. Nobody wants a mortgage. Mm. I, I might. So, right. And so I try to de-emphasize the, the mortgage and then talk about the house and then say, have you had an opportunity to sit down with the lender and talk about your financing options? Right. I use the word options as opposed to pre-qualified. I make the assumption that they're going to be able to, to afford it. And uh, I would take it from there. That's a really good one. So you guys, round of applause for Stephon. <laughs> But what are some other things that we could ask or we could talk about if someone says, you know what, I don't think I can afford this house? Help me understand. I love it. Keep going. Yeah. Like, help me understand how knowledgeable you are about what your monthly feeling would look like if you were to pick it. Right. We don't know, y'all, if they just put on Zillow, type three or four numbers, and got some paper approval that could really go pretty quiet, right? Mm -hmm. They could walk in and go, you know what, I can't afford this house. In reality, maybe they can't. Right, in different circumstances. I think those both of those are right. Anyone else have any other things they might have? Yeah, I love that. Janet. Let me show you some homes you can afford. Right. That would be a great one. That would be a really good one. Have you considered any other areas or styles or types of houses that you feel are a little bit more about it? Love it, Alice. What do you feel you can afford? Great question. Are we close or are we not? Are right. We did you meet with a qualified lender that can tell you how much you afford? You well, I'm you. You know, I can't afford this, but what can you afford? And they don't know. I love that. That's a really good one. Okay, you guys, that's great. Alice, you're next since you had such good things to say. <laughs> okay, Alice, pull a slip of paper. Let's hear exactly what to say. Thank you guys again for participating. Okay, read it out, Alice. Okay, listening. I need to wait to list my house until I fix it up. Oh, I mean, have you ever heard of this? I need to wait to list my house before I fix it up. I have a couple things I need to do to it first. Wanted to fix up the kitchen. What, are, what would you say to that in a listing presentation? I would discourage that in that, you know, a lot of my buyers are looking for something they can make their own. Great so point. your choice of gray on gray may not be theirs. So you might want to consider discounting slightly and letting the buyer make their own choices. That's a really good one. You guys are going to applaud for Alan. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> okay, what else would you say to this person? I think I need to wait to list until I fix up my house, fix the kitchen. What else would you say? What else would we say? I would ask them why they think they need to fix it up and what is it that they're thinking about doing. What would it change? Right. Do you think that fixing up the kitchen, how much a value is going to increase on your property by fixing up the kitchen? What are your predetermined amounts, right? They may think if they put 10000 in their kitchen that their house is now worth 100000 more. Is there a math equation like that that we use in real estate? It's like every 10000 you get fifty. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, good point. So I love that. Alice, 
I encourage people not to do any fixing unless they can get three times as much back. Right. Good point. Really good point. Now, some things may need to be fixed to get sold. We need to be real, you know, and, and we need to be, you know, realistic. It's a part of our experience as realtors to help advise them what they need to do to get their house sold. Am I right or am I right? Right? What? So we might need to give them a little bit of that advice or direction where they need to go, or the market could be so hot, it doesn't matter what they put into their house, someone's going to buy it, and they're going to get the money they need from it. I love it. Okay, Richard, pull one. <laughs> Got this. Read out loud. Right. Zillow says my house is worth eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that's what I want to sell it for. Oh, have you guys ever had a client that went and you know pillow or whatever it's called? I like, probably should have written that on the sheet. I don't know. <laughs> what would you say to that, Richard? How open-minded would you be to an actual real estate agent coming into your home and taking a look at, at what your home is from a buyer's perspective? Something Zillow doesn't do. Good points. You guys, round of applause for Richard. I love that. Really good one. <laughs> you know, yeah, you never know because the estimates, like they don't even put in data at that point, right? Someone just looks at their address and it gives them some type of number, but it makes them feel like they have that value. What else would you say? What else would you ask or say? Janet, you're a great one for this. Well, that's cool. Zillow is statistically right 16% of the time. <laughs> You're not 16% of the time. So I think if you're going to look at prices, it's better to uh, actually do a comparative analysis and find out really what the house would sell for. It might yes. be more. Are you open to a second opinion from a professional whose job it is to be the master of your market to come in and to let you know what the market says we should list your house for? This isn't what I say I should list your house for. This is what the market is telling us your house needs to be listed for. Mike? I would bring up, I would ask them, have you read through the Zillow's estimate disclosure that Zillow says in their own words that gives a range of the current value and then provide that to them and say, are you okay with going that low or do you want to make sure that you're working with a professional that can get you closer to the higher end because it is just an estimate according to their own disclosure. Right. They have the word estimate in there for a reason. Right? I love that. Janet, pull one. Do a couple more. Higher offers. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in the bidding war. Oh, so when you're writing offers and you're trying to close on a client and they say, you know what? I don't want to be in a bidding war. What do you say to that? I don't want to buy a house right now. I don't want to write an offer. I don't want to be in a bidding war. What would you say to that? I would say I have to be I have to be I the way to avoid a bidding war is to put in a good offer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I love that, Janet. Round right of applause, you guys, for Janet. Um, you know, it's really funny because we have to think about things like bidding war and ask questions like, well, what do you consider a bidding war? Right? Think about it. They may consider a bidding war being against another person. How many times do we place an offer now in this market where more than likely you have more than one? A lot. Right? So you need to go in with some questions and ask them more questions. What do you consider a bidding war? What is it about a bidding war that's causing you to not move forward? Is it the anxiety? Is it that, you know, we need to probe a little bit more. That's great. Yeah, good, good, good point, Shannon. Okay, one more. Richard Sperling or Leslie? One of you. Pass it down. Pull it out. <laughs> Pull it out. Leslie, what do you have? Oh, we just started looking. 
Ooh, that's a good one. How many of you guys encountered that client? An open house, they walk in and they say, oh, you know what, Penny? It's cool. I just started looking. I, you don't need to talk to me. I just started looking. What would you say to that person? I, I think I would start by asking what it is they're looking for. Right. Try to get some information to build that relationship. And then, you know, maybe segue into, I'd like to be there for you then. Hey, you guys are having a talk really good. Right. You're just so looking. How long have you been looking? Right. How are you looking? Have you been going by open houses? How are you finding the properties that you're just looking for? Right. What else would someone say to that person? What have you? What? What? What made you keep up with that person? Why are you looking now? That's over in the maybe. What is your time on? What is this should be satisfied at the corner. Are you on a month to month? That's great. Sure. Yeah. Um, would this be your first home purchase? And if it is, then it's the right time to go to your online That's really good. Yeah, turn into some type of appointment or a tie down. Alice. Because obviously for the ladies in the room, if any of y'all have been married, you know how you want to try on like 50 wedding dresses? And yet everyone almost always goes back to the first one or two that they tried on because they feel that they just need to see more. It's the same thing with houses. It's the same thing with houses. Yeah, Bob. Perfect. That's exactly what we have to meet. Sit down, go over your needs, go over the buying process, show you how you build wealth in the real estate. And have a, you know, budget, we'll really good points. Yeah, tying them down to some type of appointment and using language such as, well, Bob, that's great that you just started looking. Even if you're not ready to buy for another 10 years, it's important to have a plan put in place so that you can get the house when you're ready. Has anyone discussed your options to make sure that that can happen in the future? Right? Great one. Stefan. I think the goal of the open house is to get the contact, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing we can do that entices them to give us their contact information. So I, I like to entice them by talking about off-market deals. Uh, would you be interested in receiving information about properties that have not come on the market yet? We're, we're with one of the largest real estate companies in the area, and we often have deals that we know about before the general public does. Would that be of interest to you? That's a really good point, Stefan. Um, okay, you guys, does this help a little? Do we yes, encounter so these yeah, things? Here. Yeah, good. Um, so I have a few more. We'll do this again. I have a few more that I'll save for another team meeting. Um, remember, when these things happen and we encounter people in the field and we're not sure exactly what to say, you know, we think we know, we've heard something. Now is the time for us to lean together with this amazing group of people that we have sitting in these tables and in these offices and ask them this question. If someone stumps you or you stumble under words, go to a Stefan, go to an Alice and say, hey, Someone brought this up to me and I wasn't quite sure what to say. I don't know if I maybe said it the right way. Or could I have tied it into getting them into an appointment? When we work together, we're learning and sharing those experiences rather than all of us starting from fresh each and every time. Because questions are going to change. Clients are going to change. The way we answer these questions are going to change based on the market. Right? So round of applause. I thank you so much. for everyone who participated. <laughs> all right. Moving on, Simon is not here yet. So we will go ahead and skip through him there. He just said a few updates for us. Do we have any of our affiliate partners? Do you want to come on up here, Mike? Who else do we have or missing here today? Cindy, can you go grab Sarah? Mike, why don't you come on up here for us for right now? Mike, come on up here. <laughs> Cindy, you want to take Sarah? Good morning. That is the most important thing that I'm just so excited and itching to tell you guys about today is that CPI came in lower than expected. And I didn't even really want to talk to you much about any other things that are going on in lending right now because this is just so exciting. Because the Fed has been talking about for like a couple of years now about how focused they are on bringing inflation down and that's the reason why interest rates on mortgages have been high for so long. And we're finally starting to see a continued strong trend in CPI coming down. So 
We actually had a really great day for rates today. Rates already came down to 6.99, which is uh, not seven. It's uh, not yeah, seven. Not seven. It's six point nine nine. It's not seven. <laughs> I rounded it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's honestly, I think uh, what I'm most grateful or thankful for today. <laughs> this like Thanksgiving event thing that we have going. On. So that's what I'm all excited about. And let's just remember that over the next, uh, what is it, like 45 days, maybe 46, seven days in the rest of the year, a lot of agents, a lot of industry professionals start to scale back and yeah. not work quite as much. And just remember that right now, especially if we continue this downward trend, you're going to build quite a pipeline that will actually make you money in January. I have so many clients that are already pre-approved. And for completely other reasons, other than interest rates, are not able to buy until after the first of the year. And this is just helping them out so much. And I can continue to vamp while we're waiting for other of them. No, no, no. <laughs> no, ask you, you know, and the, re the reason I was going to ask you this is because from what I'm hearing, there's a lot of people that are preparing to buy in the next year in 2024 yes. and they're getting ready to end the year and they were just filing their taxes and everything. You know, when is a good time to really have a conversation with that client when they say they want to buy in 2024? Like when is a good time for them to meet with a lender and work out all the details? I like to tell people 30 days before you want to start looking at homes, let's get the process started. Because yeah. there's there's a lot of things that underwriting asks for. And right now, underwriting is slow because it's the holidays. And so there'd be just no reason why you shouldn't jump on the opportunity to get a fully underwritten pre-approval right now while it's just easy to get. And you have the time to go through the process so that as soon as the first of the year hits, people can jump out there and start placing super strong offers. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate oh, you. Are loving that. Zoomies are loving what Mike said. Huh? Your Zoomies <laughs> are loving what Mike said. Oh, good. I love that. Sarah, come on here. What do you have for us? I'll piggyback on what Mike said. I have a lot of files right now. I'm on my third, fourth lender. Uh, they're changing underwriting conditions as we speak. So they're shopping and I have agents that are arguing, well, the buyer has the right to shop and the listing agent wants to cancel. So I think that's a great idea to get people in and qualified and hopefully that those conditions stay what they are. Same with insurance. That's what I was going to say, homeowner's insurance. Another problem. I was just talking to one of our agents. <laughs> like, There are some like, insurance brokers out there, if you know any, that's a good contact to have where they can shop different policies. Right now, a lot of people are having to insure with California Fair Plan, um, just because that's the only one who they can really get. I've been and, hearing bamboo. Um, I've had some oh. policies with bamboo, and I've seen like some agents being able to broker to bamboo, like farmers or uh, I can't remember the other agent. But there's a few agents that will broker it to bamboo just to get a policy. I have some files where they're getting multiple policies one from AAA, one from Fairplan, just to get enough coverage from both different companies. So they're trying to come up with different options. So it's just something I see a lot in escrow that's a problem. Um, and just reviewing your contracts. I can't tell you how many times I get contracts and things aren't marked on who's to pay what. And then we're trying to renegotiate things later. Uh, does everyone know like VA loans require term, right? <laughs> so I've got two- uh, as What type of clearance? Section one. Section. So, and it's required, and the buyer can't pay for it. So, I just want to, I had two escrows just open without termite in the purchase agreement. I know it's going to come up. <laughs> and now I have two files where they're trying to negotiate who's going to pay for it because it's required by the lender. So, just things like that, you know, just be aware of the details, you know, know your contracts inside and out to make sure, like, when you open escrow, it's fully clear, like, who's paying for what, who's responsible for what. Do we need HOA docs? Is there a city report? You know, what are the requirements? Just because I've seen a lot of things get missed. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll teach my escrow tips, uh, do's and don'ts again. That would be if anyone wants to come in for that. Things that I notice when I'm in escrow that get missed or we're renegotiating later or trying to figure out who's going to do what. 
um, just holiday closures. That's another one is we're getting oh. holiday season when it's yeah. closed and we go through escrow, um, you know, with the time that, that we go through, remember that's going to affect the days of close. Absolutely. I have a lot of people trying to close before Thanksgiving, but it's like, okay, it's Tuesday. We need docs Monday to fund Tuesday to close Wednesday. So it's like, we really only have a couple of days of working time left though, but. There's a hand back there? I know. Yeah, I, oh. I was just going to say, yeah, kind of piggyback on that. It's just so important when you're looking at or deciding on an escrow link to determine how many holidays are within that escrow period. There's a lot of people right now who, because we've already gotten people under it, most lenders can close in like 20 to 25 days. But if several of those days are holidays in there, you really have to plan around that. So just take a look at a calendar. Yeah. <laughs> Where can they get a list of the holiday closures, Sarah? Um, on our website, actually. You can go to PacificCoastlineEscrow.com and we have a list of all the holidays. The days were closed, the days the county's closed on our website. So uh -huh. yeah, lots of information on our website too. I don't know if anyone's been on it. Forms, documents, contacts, mm -hmm. things on there. Feel free to check it out. And if you guys have questions on any of it, please let me know. Again, seller net sheets. If you need any of that, please reach out to me. Happy to help. I do, I do. I have a list. I can tell that to you. It's also on our website too. Um, actually, if you go to our website, it's not just a list. You can actually click on the city, and it'll pull up all the forms, the websites, the costs, everything is on our on our website. You can do that too. So that's great. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. <laughs> Big guy, what's up, Simon? What do you uh, think of us? Do you have anything for us? It How threw me off today. Been? It kind of threw me off. I didn't realize. <laughs> I've been back and forth with phone calls from the whole morning. So who's uh, been involved and in, uh, dealt with a, a transaction that involves a replacement property, meaning like a COP, mm, where there's yeah. multiple transactions involved. Mm -hmm. Meaning oh. you're the listing agent, but you're also helping the sellers purchase a property, but you're also navigating the uh, the offer that was submitted on your listing. Now you've got four transactions technically completed, right? So you got to be very on top of your game when it comes to these types. It's not just your typical, we open escrow and we close in 30 days because there's so many moving parts. And just this morning, I've been dealing with one of our top agents on a situation where she is listing in it, but the buyer buying her property is also selling their property and they need the proceed from the sale of the uh, property in order for them to purchase the property that our agent is involved. So you see the chaos and the confusion. So I just want to put things into perspective is documentation and like my saying calendar, you know, and making sure that you're constantly in communication with everyone. If that means that you need to be involved with the conversation with even the uh, agent that is not even part of your transaction, kudos to you because it'll definitely give you that upper advantage to be able to navigate and have a very smooth, concurrent closing. Does that make sense? And, uh, you know, it, 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 it goes sideways really quick because contingencies, when are we doing inspections, mm -hmm. when is the deal going to close, and then the buyer, you know, we're in the mercy because they're doing their inspections as well, and they have to really contingencies. So there's a lot of work where it seems to be going smooth, but it can definitely go sideways fast. And then do we continue with the process or do we cancel out? Well, in this particular scenario, we're at the home stretch. We were supposed to close tomorrow, and now the buyer who submitted the offer on our, on our listing is asking for an additional extension. And now I was in the vehicle right now, literally 15 minutes on the call, just trying to navigate because the sellers are so frustrated and they don't seem to understand. This is where you, as real estate professionals, need to really arm yourself with the right information and this is where communication is crucial and very important. And there's documents to, to that as well, right? You got the COP and then you got the uh, other one, which is uh, the S, uh, what is it, Richard? The uh, SR, 
TR form, depending on who you represent, right? So there's two forms that you have to understand. I recommend that you read and then reread it and then read it again because it's so confusing and you can always reach out to me as well if you have any questions. So that's kind of the uh, war story uh, that I have for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> yes. Oh, I was just going to say that's so important to communicate with escrow too. Because a lot yeah. of times I'm in that middle situation, they want to start talking about per diems or they want to do this or they want to do that. But you also, if you have financing, you kind of run everything by the lender. Can we add, you know, six days of per diem? Is it going to cause an issue? You know, things to just think about. But escrow and escrow, the other escrow company can be talking to each other constantly to try to find ways to help alleviate situations. Sometimes if you have those, the best thing to do when you're opening escrow is maybe choose the same title company so that the same title companies on both transactions, if you can, if it's an option, just helps a little bit because you have two title companies that are receiving all the money first before escrow does. And, and just to add to that, make sure your TC is also. Leverage yourself with your TC. They mm. will be the best uh, uh, help and support to you. And then they can also be having those conversations with everyone else. So that way you can focus on the future. So that's very important. So. That's great. Thank yeah. you guys very much. Um, were there any comments or something in the chat? I know Kim, uh, you messaged on there. Was there someone who wanted to comment? Oh no, I I mentioned that oh. we were just happy with what Mike was saying. Oh good. <laughs> I think everyone's <laughs> happy. I think everyone's happy. You see a little bit of reprieve for a little bit. Thanks, Kim. All right, so let's take a look at what we have coming up on the calendar. So if you guys did not see, very, very big announcement. We've always known that Mel Robbins is coming. That, that came a bit a month ago, maybe. Um, but now it's the Robbins time squared. Uh, and honestly, they're both pretty well known. So it's hard to say who's the more the headliner than the other. Um, but it did just get announced yesterday that Tony Robbins will be the main keynote speaker for our family reunion. Big, big, big deal. They extended the early bird pricing just until tonight at midnight. And that is central time for those of you to be able to get in. Because let me tell you, it will sell out because of this big announcement. So if you're considering getting tickets and you haven't already, today is the day to get them. Otherwise, we're going to spend another couple hundred dollars, right? Um, so make sure you guys do that today. If you need any help checking out, uh, or getting that set up, please let us know. We can help get you registered. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have a huge group of us going, especially now that Tony Robbins, everyone's pretty excited about that. So go under a thousand bucks to go hear him speak. It's, it's pretty amazing. All right. So moving on, uh, we do have this class happening this Wednesday. Uh, so tomorrow, did someone say creative financing in a high interest market with Alex Skirr? And uh, with Kevin Kelly, yeah, Sarah, did you have I was going to say, I'll be there too. Right. A sample of what a seller looks, net sheet looks like, a copy of notes. I do carry back so you can kind of see what happens in escrow and what the documents look like. So that's a really good point because not all escrow companies do sell their carry backs, correct? No, uh, there's very few that do carry backs, and there really aren't a lot. But yeah. I do, and I'm happy to share what it kind of looks like. Great. Join us tomorrow at noon for that session. Producers Club, look at this handsome fella. This Friday, 8 a.m., join us. We're going to hear a little bit more about Richard. I get to probe him and ask him a bunch of good questions and figure out how his brain works, right? So please join us on Zoom for that. Um, it'll be real good 30 minutes this Friday from 8 to 8.30. Uh, and then, of course, piggybacking into his class is coming up here at the end of the month, The Science of Sales where we're just going to be breaking down a little bit about how sales work, how to keep someone on the phone, how to get them close, et cetera, how our verbiage and tonality and things like that can impact how we actually are in regards to our successfulness when we're talking to clients. So come and join Richard for this class, Tuesday, November 28th. It's going to be right after the team meeting uh, that week. It's in person and on Zoom. And can I add to that? Yes. I think part of the science is stay calm. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all need that stay calm. Uh, Alex, you want to pitch this one? Our book? Uh, yeah, this one's book club is called Make Your Bed. It's a short. Um, short, sweet, short, you know. Um, 
it, I've read this book at least four or five times in you know the last I don't know ten years, and every time I get something else out of it, it's it's really a it's a good idea to come to book club. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So and books will be here. I heard a Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thursday. Great, thank you. Actually, that book uh, I read when I was younger, and it made me actually make my bed. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, just like the title says, uh, there's something about that. Uh, seeing that, and that you're coming home to do it, you know, and to see your bed all made, and to, to feel what that feels. Starting does. your day off with a well done task. A well done task that makes you feel good. It's easy to check the box, and it gets a good one. Great. Um, so how many of you guys saw Molly Fletcher speak or have heard of Molly Fletcher at the last family reunion? Richard, amazing, right? She's and have a great speaker. You guys don't know who Molly Fletcher is. Uh, we did show part of her keynote. She spoke last year at family reunion. She is a long, long, long time sports agent, not a real estate agent, but an actual like sports manager agent. And she talks about how she literally grew up from nothing and talks about the tenacity it takes to be able to succeed at an extremely high level in that male-dominated field. So it was so popular that everyone kept asking Molly to come back that Gary actually approached Molly and they now created a class just for Keller Williams that Molly is going to teach and lead that talks about the tenacity and the energy that you need in order to be able to succeed in your business. So scan the QR code and get involved. Um, there is one day that they're having it. It's at 8 a.m. and it's for 30 minutes. And I believe that is at no cost. And it's kind of the intro where she's going to talk about the session, um, where she's going to talk a little bit about what the actual course is going to look like. But let me tell you, she is an amazing speaker. She has great stories and has been through a lot to get where she needs to go. And I think you guys are all going to get something from it. So please join me and sign up for this um, little session, like I said, to learn a little bit more about this new program that they're putting together. So pretty exciting. Okay, Thanksgiving food drive. We've seen some food that start rolling in. It's not too late. If you guys have food, please bring it in here at the front. Coordinate with Richard Sperling. Um, it's great to see that coming because we'd love to help those families in need. Richard, when are they going to come by and pick it up? Okay, okay, got it. And they, they need food all the time too, so that's great. Yeah, thank you. So make sure you guys are doing that. We have our little box up at the front. We're doing our annual coat drive. Just a friendly reminder to please bring in your gently used and new coats um, to be able to donate for those who are in need that need a little bit of warmth right now. Um, it does go to a very specific program. Uh, her name is Carol Dean. She's a close friend of many. and an agent out of the West Side office, I believe, right? Simon, West Side. Um, who has since passed away and, and every year did this big coat drive for the community. So we help uh, keep her legacy going by doing this. So please bring them in. We've got a nice single box at the front. If you'd like to have a flyer to use, to door knock, to share with your farm and people to collect, please let us know and we'll create that for you and give you guys the link. Okay? Great. Um, business planning clinic that's fast approaching. I need you, need you to RSVP um, because there will most likely be some limited seating. There is no cost for you. It's happening here at Coastal. Uh, we're even coordinating, bringing in extra chairs and tables and the whole fun thing. So you guys have a nice, comfortable day. A uh, breakfast or a little, you know, like munchies and things like that will be provided in the morning and then lunch will be provided that day. So make sure if you haven't RSVP yet, do so now so we can make sure that we save you a spot for that day, okay? Tech the Hall. So there is a day uh, to help benefit KW Cares. It's called Tech the Halls that Keller Williams International is putting together. It's not just about technology, but other productive business-related activities. They're going to have multiple speakers that day. They're going to be talking about command. They're going to be talking about lead generation, overall technology, and then again, some productive business techniques. Uh, scan the QR code and join us Wednesday, December 6th. You guys can register right there or get the link from Summer at the front. Friendly reminder, our golf tournament is coming up December 13th. If you haven't already signed up and you're a golfer, we'd love to help you get there. Don't even need a whole team. You can be an individual agent. They'll put you on a team when you get there. 
we're going to be like me and I'm going to cart drive around there and harass everyone on the <laughs> course. But please join us. It's helping to benefit KW Cares as well. So we really appreciate your involvement. Most of you should have received a evite, not all of you, to our holiday party. Please, please, please mark your calendars and RSVP as soon as possible because we are working on getting a head count. If for some reason you do receive the evite, it doesn't mean you were invited. It means most likely you got lost in your junk. So please come see Summer at the front and we'll make sure that you get all that information. Okay? That's it. Thank you guys so very much. <laughs> I thought Kevin was speaking in the back. Kevin, do you have anything for us today? Other than I thought I was supposed to be here too. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm going to say a couple things because Brian and Karen are showing up with the outlines. Yeah. I did something for the first time and I'm all proud of myself. So I did that chat. GPT. There yes, you go. Love it. And I love put that. in um, reasons a buyer needs a real estate. Oh, it's nice. Great one. It was really great. There are yeah. 28 things. Yeah. So we turned it into a marketing piece. We've got another one that's 18 processes that they would have to do outside of the loan process just to do their just to just to buy a house. So unless you, you know, unless you're unemployed, you have nothing else to do. So then you can't qualify. So, so it's a it's a double wedding there. If you um, if you want to also circulate it on Facebook, yeah. mainly yeah. Facebook, um, I saw it. I copied it. A lot of people, please go look on my on my uh, Facebook and copy and paste it because there's I think it's like ninety steps that a seller's agent has to do, and ninety steps that a buyer's agent is doing. We just try to make the public aware of what we do as agents mm -hmm. with all this talk about commissions and not paying commissions and that we really have to open the eyes of the general public to make them realize when we are doing car sales we work damn hard so the more we can send that out the better well and i think the conversation is also going to be with the seller mm -hmm. do you want to accept an offer where there is no representation Mm -hmm. Right, they don't understand contingency. They don't understand removal. They don't, okay, so are you giving all the power to someone on the street? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for buyers. So again, their marketing pieces. My group will be here. Sorry, yeah. Angela's yeah. scheduling error on my part. It's always on my part. And uh, but we could fertilize those for you. We could put your your logos and stuff, and then keep it in your library and just send it out to the book. That's great. And we're very thankful for that. Thank you. Aww, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, if you guys think we're marketing people, things like that, we'll have them, Kevin, at the front. But thank you, guys. Uh, so now we're going to move on to our lunch. If you could give us a couple minutes